This podcast provides a platform for our guests to share their experiences and inspire our listeners to be brave and bold in pursuit of their dreams. As you listen, we invite you to explore how these concepts apply to your own story. You know what to do. Be great and be grateful. We're mic'd up with Mike DeChocho. All right, guys, today's guest began her career as an elementary school teacher and then earned a degree in law, practicing for six years before realizing it was time to trade in writing trial briefs for writing children's books. Such a cool story. She has now sold over 10,000 copies and frequently visits school libraries for speaking events to help inspire children to make reading fun. Think about that. She's won the New York Big Book Award, and she's a four-time Mom's Choice Award winner and has also won the Benjamin Franklin Digital Award. Welcome to the show, Allison Fody bork Thanks for Thank being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to talk oh with God. you. Quick shout out to Jonathan Masolinas for the connection. I know he's doing a lot of great things with his company, Empowered Publicity, and he connected us weeks ago. I know. He's doing great things. Great things with children's literature. He is. And, it, and that reflects on what you're doing, too, because you came highly recommended. I have, just so everyone, if you're watching this, I have three pages of notes here from Allison. I did my research. Um, she's been doing so much uh, throughout you know, the, the community, really. Um, tell us a little bit about you know, where you're from and what you're doing right now. And I have some questions I want to dive into. But if you can kind of share a little bit about your story um, and how you got to what you're doing today. Okay, so I, I graduated from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette uh, way back when in elementary education. So I ended up teaching school for a year, but always knew I wanted to go to law school. So I went off to law school at Southern University Law Center in Baton Rouge, and I practiced law for nearly seven years as assistant attorney general, which was really great. I got to write a lot, I got to research, I even helped rewrite the emergency handbook after Hurricane Katrina. So I was doing some things that were inspiring and interesting. Um, but at the time, we had two young kids. They were about uh, six and four. And I just felt like I need to spend a little more time with them and be there. And, um, you know, it's long hours when you're a practicing attorney, especially with the state. Sure. So I said, you know what, I'm going to take one year off and I'm going to spend as much quality time with them as I can. And then they'll be in school the next year and I'll go back to work. So as they are, we're beginning this whole transition to um, stay at home mom, which I really mm -hmm. love. I uh, would read stories to them. My husband and I would read stories every night before bedtime. And so uh, one night we were trying to pick a book out of the bookshelf and the bookshelf was already overflowing uh, with mm -hmm. books because we love to read. We think it's so great for them. And we read every single book and they're like, mom, we need more books for our bookshelf. And I'm thinking, Oh, okay, well I gotta be frugal now. <laughs> so um, how about I just write you a book sure. and they jumped for joy and they screamed and hollered, and they, you know, right before bed. And they were so excited. And that was my aha moment that this is the path that I need to take. If they believe in me at such a young age and they're this excited and it excites me too, then I should believe in me. So we well, read have that story. Touch, right. I mean, especially when it's coming from mom, I mean, kids, you know, they're going to love a, a great book that you can buy them as a gift or whatever, take them to the bookstore and they're just going to light up when they see all the different characters on the shelves. But you know, they maybe didn't vocalize this to you, but how cool it is is it to have mom create this concept and have it be more organic? And, you know, I just think that's, that's so fun. And even if it was just that one-off situation. So like mothers listening to this or dads listening to this, that, you know, their kids are looking for something cool or fun to do. We don't always have to go and buy it or purchase it or take them to the big right. evening out. Just write, you know, it could be with crayons, make a little story and a character together. Right. Exactly. And sometimes with children, we don't give them enough credit. And, um, you know, the little things that they do, the simple little things that they do can inspire us to do big things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up writing a story. We put them to bed. I wrote the first story that night and I read it to them the next night and they loved it. And since then it's just become 
the whole series and Alley Cat has become a part of our family. She's like a sister to them and all the characters have become almost like siblings to them. And of course, having a book feels like it's a part of me and I see it out in the world and I feel like that's almost like a, you know, a child of mine out there and people are maybe enjoying it or seeing it. And, you know, it's, it's a piece of you that can help others in their lives. Who, what was the original character? Is it, I, and I love the artwork behind your books as well. Do you do everything? Are you the artist behind it as well? No, I actually, my publisher, Mascot Books, has, um, they had a portfolio of illustrators when I signed with them. And so um, I'm not as good as, uh, as you know, Shiara, my illustrator, sure. is. And your expertise, you know. It's but not- is it, so Alley Cat is the main character, correct? Alley Cat is the main character. And in mm-hmm. every book, she has some kind of like predicament that she goes through and that she must solve. And with every problem she has, she has to solve it with either creativity, imagination, or help with friends. So that's a theme mm-hmm. of the book, besides the whole days of the week, because each book is based on the days of the week. Yeah, I noticed and that. So it, it just, I wanted to give kids a tool to be able mm-hmm. to relate to a character and recognize that they have similar problems and then have the tools to fix those problems themselves. So I got kind of a two-part question for you regarding Alley Cat. I absolutely, again, I love the design behind the books, the concept behind the books, how it's relevant and breaks it into different concepts and and days of the week, like you mentioned already. Um, If you can explain a little bit about the creative process when you come up with new characters and ideas for a book, and then what are some of those key lessons that we can learn or our children learn when we're reading them the Alley Cat series? So for each of the characters, they're all very important, and they all have an important aspect in Alley Cat's life because I feel that as humans, we, we run into different people along the way who will have an impact, small or big, on our lives, and we can learn from each one of them. And that's how I feel about my author visits. When I go in, there might be just one little student in there, and they may say one thing. And I'm telling you, I take that in my journey for the rest of my life. And um, so, your antenna's each- always on whenever you're out there making connections mm-hmm. and and inspiring their little hearts. They don't even realize what they're giving, reflecting back. And you're learning from them, right? Right. Absolutely. I'm there to be inspired by them, you know, and, you know, it's an equal relationship because I'm trying to inspire them to work hard, persevere, keep going and and do what they're passionate about and make a difference. Uh, But they're also such an important part of my life. And so with the characters in the books, they all have a role and very well thought it's planned out where each one has a certain personality because I want a reader, if they can't connect with Alley Cat herself, there might be another character where they can relate to. Maybe it's a, a shy character. Maybe it's one that kind of um, is a little more into music or whatever it is. I want readers to be zoned in on that character and see the impact that they can make on Alley Cat's life or someone else's life in that story. And so just like, for example, Bugsy is the little brother, and he's inspired by my son, who is the youngest of my two. And so when my daughter Izzy was, um, she was two years old when he was born, and we would call, his name is Carter, but we would call him Buddy, you know, because we have little play names down here in the South for everything. And so we'd say Buddy, <laughs> and um, she would say Bugsy. She couldn't say buddy at buddy, two yeah. years old. She just kind of said Bugsy. And so it yeah. kind of stuck. And it was, for me, it just represented him. And he's got such a kind heart and he's quiet and shy. And his sister is just, you know, like her life is like a musical, you know? And so, <laughs> but he's like her biggest supporter and she brings a, um, a very vibrant aspect to his life. And so, those roles within our own home are in the books too, as Bugsy, the younger brother and, and what they bring to each other's lives. And so that's how the characters. Is, is he a character as well? Well, it, it's hard to say because some people Maybe say Alley Cat's more like Izzy. Uh-huh. And I would say that Alley Cat is a combination of my childhood and, and my personality and my daughter's 
uh, personality and the things that she goes through in life. And mm-hmm. I used to daydream a lot in school and, you know, I would always think of stories and, um, and imagine things. And it's kind of like, well, I should have, that light bulb should have gone off way a long time ago that mm-hmm. I'd like to create stories, but it didn't. So my, I would always dream off into space and the teachers would like, they would snap and they would say, alley cat, come back down there, you know, finish your test. And so mm-hmm. that name stuck with me. It didn't stick with other people, but for me, that's what represents Alley Cap, someone who can dream and daydream and still work hard. And yeah. so they saw it as a as a problem or kind of an issue, and you turned it into something that's beautiful and creative and fun. And it took maybe years to reflect on that as well, right? Because at the time, I'm sure when they said Alley Cat and were snapping their fingers at you, probably didn't like that too much as a kid, right? Right, right. And you know, but now you're like, hey, I was being creative. I was daydreaming. I was doing my thing. I was in my element. And you turned it into your superpower, which is amazing. I love that story. Something I don't have written down here, I thought of as you're telling your story about, um, you know, spending all the hours, time, energy. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears that goes into getting a law degree, right? And then practicing for seven years and then, you know, not turning your back on it sounds a little dramatic, but you, you went down a different path, right? So I'm sure in, in law, you had a lot of friends, connections, people who saw you as an aspiring, would, were you listed as an attorney? Yes, I was, um, I'm, I'm still, I still am an attorney, Uh, but I was, my title was assistant attorney general. So we defended the state of Louisiana. Okay, so my guess is, you know, earning that title is not easy. And then to go and say, I'm going to focus on writing, creating children's books. I don't want to, um, you know, I just want to get your input on what, how do people uh, respond to that? And the reason I'd like you to share that is my goal for this show is to inspire people to be brave and bold in pursuit of their dreams. And I realize that with that comes a lot of adversity from our friends, family, close people in our network. We have this awesome dream in our heart a lot of times but if people don't understand it they try to bring us back down to earth and with you you were in the you were doing well in your profession what was that situation like were people trying to bring you back to earth uh yes definitely (laughs) um you know you're taking a risk i heard that a lot you're taking a risk that you have a good job you are you know stable life and people don't like to be uncomfortable and they don't like to see others be uncomfortable um, because it scares them that, that, you know, what if, what if I did that? And that is, that is a very scary feeling. Um, So what happened along the way is I did doubt my choice at first and then door started opening and, people started smiling and these people were, maybe they were six, seven, eight year old little people, you know, and um, things just grew. And as long as I just focused on what made me happy and, and I focused on my own courage and bravery, then I was able to tune out all of those, those doubts from others and keep moving forward. And as I did that different opportunities, um, would come up and um, as long, I'm, my main focus was to bring joy to others, to be kind, to teach children through literacy, wanted them to read more, um, to inspire people to be creative, to go for it. And that was it, it was very simple. And so I've been able to do that. And these teachers, librarians, these, the people that attend my events, they, um, they inspire me to do the same. And so I get the first two years, because I've been doing this about four and a half years, I reflected a lot on how I felt a void with not feeling that I was putting my law degree to good use. Mm -hmm. Um, But then that void was filled with um, just love, support, my community alone who Mm -hmm. cheered me on, you know, when I wanted to, to get this giant alley cat mascot that comes to my author visit, they helped me create that dream. And, and then I realized that, you know, I do have the love and support of them. They might be, they might 
be just as nervous about this transition. Mm -hmm. Um, but as long as I persevered and keep working forward and keep working hard Mm -hmm. for something that was good, that it was going to be okay and trust that. Yeah. It's one of the most difficult things is to, to stick to it because the people that are giving us the feedback, uh, we like, if you're reflecting on it too, you appreciate it. It's not that they're trying to steal your dreams. They're just maybe thinking with their own heart and mind, which yeah. is okay because not everybody's wired the same way. So I think it's hard. And, and I wanted to sh- thank you for sharing that because if somebody's listening right now and they might be getting that pushback, um, it, it's easy to get upset. It's easy to kind of backlash or, you know, then you all of a sudden are like, you don't believe in what I'm doing. And that's not even always the case. It's not, they care about you. They care about right. your health, your well-being. They don't want to see you struggle. Nobody wants to see a close friend or family member do that. But the person that's actually in the dream and building it like you are and have for four and a half years, and you're tremendous. You wouldn't have gotten to where you are, of course, today if you didn't go through those trials. Um, and, you know, so I think it's important for people to realize it's okay. People are going to say that, but find a way to latch on latch your spirit on the the actual dream and then start solving for how you're going to make it really happen and the other people will eventually come around right and focus on the people who are your um and i i don't necessarily like the word tribe but focus on those people who are they're in your arena they're in your court they're sitting there and they they don't pass judgment. They're there to support you because that's who I want to be for mm-hmm. them. And then the more that they do that for me, the more that I do it for others. So I feel like it's a reciprocal. And you're looking for people to collaborate with, right? Other authors. Um, I know we've kind of had that conversation briefly off camera, but people can check out the Alley Cat series at alleycatseries.com, which is A-L-Y-C-A-T series.com. Uh, they can also reach out to you. I can give your email. Sure. That is Allison, A-L-Y-S-S-O-N at alleycatseries.com. So if you're an author and you could be living anywhere in the country, right? Right, right. And, uh, and Allison welcomes you to connect with her and I'll let you share more on what, how and why you, you do that. So I, like I've talked about this journey and the different doors that open just by keep pushing forward and working hard and persevering. So I was at our local news station um, about a year and a half ago and I was promoting one of the events that I was having for the Alley Cat series. So after the, after I did the, the little segment, I was talking to the producer and I said, you know, it would be really great to have a segment based on children's literature, new releases that parents can um, see and that are great. They have good values, good morals, and then have a coordinating craft that you can do with it. You know, sometimes on the news, it's all bad. And, and we, we really want to focus on good too. So the producer ended up calling me the next day and said, I think that's a great idea. Can you come Thursday? And every Thursday, <laughs> wow. and do that, and I, I just, I was like, wow, I've never been, you know, I've barely been on the news, you know. I, I used to be very shy um, when I would talk, you know, my heart would race, and you know, I would, mm. I would do that whole coughing thing so that you know people didn't know my voice was shaking. But then I just kind of pushed out of the way and said, you know what, I'm helping others to get their books out there and to feel this joy that I feel. And so as soon as I said, yes, people started sending me their, their books. I opened a PO box and uh, now it's like Christmas. My kids go and check the PO box with me and we get some books and um, I highlight them on my show. Of course I go through them and make sure that they have good values, good morals, all these things Mm -hmm. that I feel that moms and dads want. Oh And um, I, we do a coordinating craft where they can continue the story because I know when I, finish a book I'm sad I'm sad that it's over yeah. but like the alley cat series I like to have something that they can do after reading that continues that journey with the character so every Thursday it airs on news 15 here in Lafayette and then we post a link and you can share it all over on Facebook and it's on the website and so I I welcome submissions for 
mm. authors or publishers or publicists to send to me at my PO box. Um, and I'll check it out and you'll check it out. And if you, if it's the right fit, you'll showcase it on the show. Yes. That's a great opportunity. Again, it's Allison at Alley Cat series and A L Y S S O N. So if you're inspired and maybe you already have something coming out, get it in Allison's hands and, and that can grow from there. Um, you have put a lot of effort into this, even before you started four and a half years ago and in the energy into the concept. And now you have multiple characters. There's plush dolls that you're selling on your website that look really cool. By the way, I have a five-year-old daughter. She turned five yesterday, Isabel. Is your daughter's name Isabella as well? She's Isabella. Isabella, that's and right. And we call her Izzy. Yeah, so I'm, we started throwing Izzy into the mix. I call it Isabel just about everything but her actual name, monkey, string bean, yeah. lovebird, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, the, the names go on. But um, so I saw when you mentioned Izzy, I, I thought that was a great connection. But I'm going to be sharing this series with her. I'm so excited, you know, to collect the characters and have this be a part of her childhood as well. Uh, but what I wanted to say is you've been putting all that energy in, right? What out of, of everything, if you can look back on it right now, and there's so much more room for growth, which is encouraging, but what's your greatest reward for all the effort that you put in? I think the, the greatest reward is to be able to have something that my children are, are proud of. And, yeah. you know, I, I just, as parents, I'm sure, you know, you just want to make them proud. You want them to, um, to smile and be happy. And um, when they talk about the series, they know that they've been a part of it. They know that they've inspired it, that they, they've been with me. They come to my book events they see the journey and the hard work because it is, it's a 24 hour job. People think that writing a book is, is simple, but it's a, you know, everything from getting it out there and marketing to the, you know, the writing of it and, you know, the promotional aspect, just the signs alone, you know, you have to design, I design everything myself and they see yeah. from, from start to finish. And so, and the, the greatest thing that, that they can see is the longevity of it. Because mm -hmm. I think that if you commit to something and do it for a long time and be passionate and keep moving forward, even through negative things or bad reviews and you focus on the good, you're teaching your children a really good lesson that you can keep working hard despite all of you know some of the hurdles. Mm -hmm. And to see them, um, like the, like my daughter left a note on my um, bathroom counter this morning and it, she drew something and she just put love you. And then she drew the face of Alley Cat, you know? And so it's just like our little, it's, it's our little it's, thing. It's almost like part of the family. And she family, knows, totally. <laughs> she knows that Alley Cat now for us represents the book tours we've gone on. And, you know, we, we had fun going here and there and meeting this person and that person. And, it's just a, it's a really great experience to, to have them involved and proud of me. What, what do you think is next for Alley Cat as it continues to grow? It started as one character, one book, then you did the day, days of the week to tie in the unique stories. Multiple characters have developed from those books. What do you think is next? Do you see this becoming something like maybe a full length animation? Gosh, is it a dream of yours? That would be my dream that that would be a dream come true and i do we you know we talked about longevity and i feel it's that a netflix series I right. really oh i would love that that would be a dream come true and um of course the first year i was thinking oh this would be great as an animated animated series but you know you have to do it long enough and it has to be out there enough for that to happen and mm. um yeah, it would be a dream come true. And I'm going to keep working hard until maybe one day someone sees it and loves I'm going it. I'm going to inspire you or challenge you in a good way to seek that out and see what you would need to do. If that's really in your heart, maybe that's the next direction for this and continue to do the books. But um, I can think of multiple series having Isabel, again, being five uh, that we've watched that have really been 
uh, fun for the both of us to watch. And some of it's new for me. That was not when we were kids, right? Right. And uh, I can see Ellie Cap being right in there. And it's it's to that level of quality. I'm not saying that because I'm talking to you here, the creator of it. But I mean that. I mean, looking at your website and seeing the books and the quality of the characters, it's really, it's on par with anything else that's out there. And I mean that. So um, I want to talk about what you have coming up that's exciting. A new book right? You have a new book launching on the 17th of March, and there's an event, the book launch party in Lafayette on March 22nd. So tell us a little bit about that. I'm so excited to launch the fourth book. It's Alley Cat and the Tournament Tuesday, and it's it's inspired by my son, who is, he's nine years old, but he's been to the U.S. Kids Golf World Championship three times. So he works very wow. hard, even at a young, he started at six years old and inspires me to work that hard. And so mm -hmm. the book is based off of, of him, but also the, the, the goal to teach children that you don't need luck. You just need hard work and determination mm -hmm. and practice. And so that will release March 17th and we'll have a book launch party at the little gym of Lafayette on March 22nd at 1 PM. Mm -hmm. And it's, everybody's invited. We have the community come out. I have, it's grown so much after all of the books we do at the same place and businesses come out and they set up like a booth of activities for children and parents to do. And it's just a free event to celebrate literacy and also the community. So they get to put themselves out there and, and get exposure also, which I love. And it's, um, it's super fun. Yeah. I can tell like your body language changed just thinking about the event, <laughs> like how excited you are. Genuinely excited for that release. Now for all our listeners here that are not in Lafayette or, um, you know, in driving distance from that event, will it be available on March 17th online as well at alleycatseries.com? Yes, it'll be available. Um, and pre-order has started on alleycatseries.com, amazon.com, target.com, oh. Barnes and Noble, walmart.com, um, yeah, I haven't heard any of these platforms. Are they are these new, uh, like Amazon? And <laughs> Sounds like some small. What are you just running like a small it's business just, out of your small potatoes, You know. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! So, That's really exciting. Thank you for all of our authors or aspiring authors in the audience. Right, something I would like to learn from you. If you can summarize the full process from idea to publication, can you walk us through that just to give us an idea? Um, I think a lot of people think, you know, it, you know, you can look at it both ways. I think it's easier now with production and things than ever to maybe do it like a self-published book. But if someone's looking to understand the process, can you lay it out for us? So kind of in a nutshell, this began as me writing a manuscript. I sent that manuscript out to about 100 publishers and agents because with the, the big five publishing houses, you, they require an agent to present your submission to them. So you submit to them. So out of those 100, I got about 88 no's, like rejections. Uh, I got no responses and I got one yes, which is my, my publisher now. So after I was able to contract with my publisher, they helped me get a, an illustrator that aligned with what I thought Alley Cat represented, what she looked like. We did test sketches that took about three months. And then I went through and did illustration descriptions for each storyboard, which each page is a storyboard. Mm -hmm. And I outlined and described Alley Cat and all of her friends and everything about the scene um, as best I could. I even drew like little stick cats, you know, and I would color their bow a certain way. So Shiara, who is my illustrator in Italy, she was able to Italy? create. Yeah, she's all the way in Italy. That's and awesome. She, She's amazing. She's actually, we've never met her, but she's become about like a part of our family. My kids talk about her. They send her postcards. She <laughs> sends us postcards and she's wonderful. That's and really so, great. That just goes to show you, Hey, you can create a business, a concept and an idea. And we live in a day and age when your illustrator can be in Italy and she's a big part of your whole process and your team. Right. Right. So cool. we work together um, with the illustrations and um, once they're finalized, we, uh, my graphic designer at, at my publisher will help create the book. Then it goes to printer. It takes about a month and a half to print. So this whole process is about one year. 
Wow. And that's not counting writing the book. And so after, and this is just with my publisher, it's different for other publishers. Mm -hmm. So after it goes out there, it's stored in a warehouse where Amazon and Barnes and Noble, they can fulfill their orders um, from the warehouse. And of course I get my own author copies that I can do with my book events. And so mm. it's just different with every publisher. I have self-published two books prior to Alley Cat just to kind of get an idea of what the process is like. And they're little travel books that my kids actually took pictures of different places that we went and I created a book and I did enjoy the self-publishing route, but it, Mm. It's really hard to get that book into stores because they claim that it's not returnable. Um, so if you self-publish, some of them will not buy stock of it because it's not returnable books. However, you can maybe do consignment. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's different routes you can take. I, I, I don't think self-publishing is a bad route. I think it's a great starting point. Yeah. Um, so you'd encourage somebody to do it that way to kind of get their feet wet and yes. go through the experience, but seek out a great publisher who can actually uh, help guide your vision and your mission. Cause you had a big uh, vision of what Alley Cat would become and they helped you color it all in. Right. 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 And it's really tough to find a publisher it is not an easy task and it can take anywhere from one year to 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, is that a costly uh, for, let's say, someone like a smaller entrepreneur and they wanted to do this? Is is there a sizable cost to that or is it pretty affordable to get going? With a publisher or with yeah, just publisher. sending out? With, it depends on your publisher. Mo mm -hmm. Most publishers, you shouldn't be required to, to pay anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do buy my author copies sure. and um, to be able to, to go to author visits. Right. So, it, it, mostly it's like they get paid a percentage for being the publisher. Right, right. And so different okay. publishers have different royal, royalty percentages right. also. And they, they're very different across the board. Um, a, those big publishing houses, they come with uh, really great marketing teams. And they come with, um, you know, great opportunities to get different awards. Uh, but you're going to see that that comes with a lower royalty percentage. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, my publisher, I, I adore my publisher. I have all the rights to my illustrations, to my book, to everything. And, but I do most of my marketing and publicity myself. Mm -hmm. So I work very, very hard. It's to me, it's a job and it's also a passion. So, um, it, there's different avenues. I would definitely, if you are thinking about writing a book, I would a hundred percent go for it. And, you know, I tell people all the time that, you know, you never know where your journey will lead you. And if you have that inner drive to do something, you have to go for it. The time is now. And totally. Yeah. And it, and it leads me into something else that you're involved with. And I think this is amazing too. You have other services available like consulting and you do presentations and also editing. So that ties it right in. If someone is in the position where they're either thinking about getting started, maybe they are started, they feel stuck, or they're already working with a publisher, but they want to make sure they're making the right decisions there because it's a business and you want to make the right business decisions. Can they contact you to do that? Is that, I want to make sure, you know, I, I understand how your services actually work. So shine light on that. Yes. So in the beginning, I had a lot of people reaching out for help and I don't mind helping at all. I enjoy helping others to achieve their, their goals and pursue their dreams. And so after being asked to do that several times, I decided, you know what, um, I'm going to make this available that way on my website, people can do it. They can contact me easily. And so on my website, I have a list of, of how the different services I have. I do speak at different libraries. I speak at schools, different events, um, festivals about the publishing journey. And I will take people from kind of like what I just said in a nutshell, but from start to finish. And I'll show on a slideshow mm -hmm. of, every single step along the way i give different you know tidbits on who to contact what are great organizations like uh scbwi society of children's book writers and illustrators 
all these little things that I have learned along the way. I, of course, have written them down. I have studied this. I've researched it. That's the lawyer in me coming mm -hmm. out now, um, <laughs> just researching the best avenues. And so yeah. I want to help others. Right. If you have that knowledge and, and education and you, you put those hours into it, you see that as an opportunity not to just sim simply make money on it, but to actually help people to get to a higher level. And you know, a lot of times it's just a, like un uncovering certain layers so they can break through. And if you had to experience those, some of them might maybe hardships or time and hours and energy into research, why not share that with someone who you can help them tell their story? Right, right. Just like the little plush toys that I have, you know, my daughter came home one day when we first started this journey and she's like, you know, you need a lovey because we need to bring loveys to school and they have to be this big. And so I'm like, okay, all right. So I need to make an alley cat lovey, like a plush toy. And so what I did was while they're at school, I'm going to different boutiques and stores and I'm looking on the labels of all of these little plush toys. I'm writing down all the manufacturers that are on that little label. And then mm -hmm. I go home on my computer, research all of them, send emails, give me a quote, how do you do this? And that's how you learn. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of putting yourself out there and doing it. And so um, those little things that I've learned along the way, I, I can help share with people. How do you get a push toy? How do you get a giant mascot, like a six foot mascot to attend your, your <laughs> author visits? You know, what are the best? Yeah, who, what friend did you pay off to be in that suit for hours, right? <laughs> I know. Is, a lot of that. Is he in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've never been in the, uh, my husband and I and my children have never been in the cat suit, but I have a lot of college students and I'll give them, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll pay them to come and help, you know, for an hour and they love yeah. it. They really oh, sure. do. So much um, fun. Yeah. They get lots of hugs, you know. I, I love it. I mean, the whole Alley Cat series is just it, fun. Is the best way to describe it and educational. And um, I, I'm really looking forward to getting a few of your books right away and and reading them to Isabel. Um, I saw on your site too the Alley Cat Shuffle had me wagging my <laughs> tail a little bit, right? Um, it's, it was silly, but it was something I know she's gonna love. I can't wait to show her. What do your kids think about this? And in your home, are you kind of like a celebrity to them? <laughs> having a, I, I mean, I mean that in the right in the right way, where they're they're looking up to you as a great role model, right? And before their own eyes, do you so, feel that at home? So, first, the Alley Cat Shuffle. It, it's so funny because I never would have dreamed that I'd be dancing on. Like I've done a few news segments and stuff, and TV and YouTube, and on the we. We just did the UL women's basketball game halftime show and I'm on the court with Alley Cat doing a dance and I'm like, how did I end up here? You know, <laughs> doing a dance and my kids are like, mom, yeah, just go for it. You know, um, doing it on live interviews on TV. It's crazy. And so um, that for me is something that's super fun. And with kids, they love to sing and dance and that's what I want them to do and mm -hmm. just kind of cut loose and not worry about judgment. So I hope that they can see that with me, that I'm putting myself out there and doing that and they can do it too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, lately I've been getting a lot of um, news interviews and um, different like newspaper articles about the Alley Cat series will be in the Oscar swag bag this year, which is actually coming up. And um, so that's been, we've been going, I pick up my kids from school and we run over to the, the advocate newspaper and we do a little photo shoot and then we run this way and do this. And, um, my daughter did say something like, mom, you're like, you're like famous. And I'm like, <laughs> eh, probably just within like 30 miles, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's I was really talking to so my own. inspiring for them to, <laughs> to live it and not just have you tell a story. You know, I think it's great when grandparents tell stories that inspire their grandchildren or even parents talking to their kids. But to actually see it firsthand, I think, is going to do one. They may not be in the same interest or field when they grow up, but they're going to know that if you put your heart to it and you really dream about something and you love it, look what mom created, right? Right, and, you're right. there and you're there to encourage it and your husband's there to encourage them. Uh, the sky's the limit for your kids. That's for sure. Well, you know, and we were, when they were saying, you know, Oh mom, you're famous. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably like within like my little neighborhood. But, um, I was talking with my own parents. I came over the other night and I, I was talking about the, we were showing them the news interview in the article. And I said, you know, 
mom, I remember one thing you told me whenever I was 10 years old, I sat on the counter while you were cooking and I got up there and I put my hands on my hip and I said, I want to be famous one day. And she looked at me and she's like, well, you better be famous for something good. And so <laughs> she laughed and we laughed awesome. and um, I don't consider myself at all any kind of local celebrity, but I do feel like I'm doing something good. And that's all that matters to me. Well, from afar, I can confirm that for sure. Um, speaking of that moment, so you actually said that to your mom, you know, <laughs> that you had that moment. And um, so tell us when you were, when you were a young woman, like did, who did you admire most growing up and where, where did you get, have that role model or um, was there someone that you always aspired to be similar to? So my grandmother who recently passed away, she was my inspiration and she was one of these people where she was very steadfast and she was fair, but she was firm and she loved to write and she loved to tell stories and she loved to remind us all about the, our upbringing, our ancestors. And she was basically like our historian, you know, because we need to know where we came from and where we're going and we need to continue telling those stories. And she, it was family first with her. Mm -hmm. And that inspired me so much. Everything about her, she was just, she was God's servant. And that for me was everything. And, um, you know, she recently passed away. She was 99 years old. Wow. And every single book that I got, my first box of books that came to my door, I would open it up and I would take one out and I would say, that's for grandma. What we call her grandma, grandma. That's mm -hmm. for grandma. And I would go and I would bring it to her apartment. And so, um, that's special. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, she was so special. I even dedicated Sorry for your one loss, of too. Yeah. I dedicated one of my books to her and, you know, I got my books in and I opened that one, that first one and she's not here, but, um, that's okay. Because Did you set it aside, did you keep it for her even though she's not physically with you? Well, I put it aside and then the whole Oscars thing came up, which I just kind of briefly talked about. Mm -hmm. And I was really stressed out that week because they needed 30 of a set of my books sent to LA like yesterday, you know? And so I was trying to get them all together make them look nice. And I didn't know what to do. And uh, I called on a friend, her name is Amy. And, and I just said, Hey, do you know how I should wrap these up to make them look nice? And she said, you know what? I'm leaving work right now. It was lunchtime. I'm coming to meet you at, you know, the store, the craft store. We're going to do this. She helped me so much for that, that what I felt was I was completely overwhelmed, but excited. And at that moment, I felt like, you know what? She deserves that first book. She didn't have to, to leave and help me. And yeah. she's, she's in my arena. She's one yeah. of these people that's there. And you know, we all need friends like that and they're hard to find. So you gave, you gave her the honorary book, right? I so did. you felt it had to you already, um, it had special meaning. Maybe she didn't realize that, but that particular copy you gave her was more of an honorary copy. Yes. Yes. Because I felt like that's something my grandmother would have done. Yeah. yeah. I love this. This is, this has uh, been one of my favorite conversations I've had so far on my show. Mm -hmm. I'm still early on in my journey, but we're about 15 episodes in and, uh, this is such a unique story too, because of the differing fields that you have and the experience you have, but passion led and, and your heart led you to what you're doing now. And then it becoming successful, you making such an impact both in your community and in your home. And you talked about your kids a few times and I love it because they're really the heart and the inspiration behind what you're doing. And I think something that a lot of entrepreneurs, myself included, struggle with a lot is the work-life balance. Um, we want to be present for our children, but we also don't want to be slackers when it comes to work. So we're grinding. We're, we're one o'clock in the morning reading and responding to emails because we want to make sure we didn't miss anything and start tomorrow fresh. But it's also important for us to be, you know, getting quality sleep and being there for our kids and being at their soccer practices and everything else. So I'm, I'm asking you, maybe you can help us just shine and shed some light on this. How do you balance it? Because you're a great example of doing both really well. Well, my children and my family comes first. 
And I try to focus on that because I can do so many things with researching and marketing and, um, but they come first. And when I put them first, things usually, the rest of it kind of fall into place. And so like I was saying with the interview that I had a few weeks ago, when they called, they wanted to do a photo shoot for the Oscars story. All I, I mean, I had to hurry up, pick them up from school. I took them with me. They came in They're They're part of this journey too. But you know, I always show them, I show them all sides of it. I show them the struggles. I show them the, the positive sides. I include them in everything. And I know that might be hard for other professions, mm-hmm. um, but you know, I just work hard. I do what I can. And if I can't get to it all and I can't do it all, it's going to be okay. It's going to be there tomorrow. And as long as I just keep working hard and they can see that and, and still putting them first, but it's a struggle. Yeah, it, it is. I think hard. that's great because then when you're actually doing the work too, you feel good about there's, there's this gut feeling. I'll speak for myself. There's a gut feeling when you know, Hey, I spent quality time last night with Isabel and you know, Everything was good there. And now today I'm in the moment and I'm present at work and I'm not thinking about, man, I missed that opportunity or I wish I would have did that or, uh, you know, that was the wrong thing to do. No, you're, you're living in a place of being present at work and you're being present at home, but it's totally a struggle. Um, yes. A lot of times things come up and you have to make a decision. And if it's a really big one, you don't get those, you don't get second chances really. So you right. maybe say yes to something and figure it out. But at the same time, like you said, if you do family first, then when it's time to do work, you're not thinking and questioning yourself for, for being there. You're exactly. actually in a clear state of mind. It is, it is definitely a struggle, and I struggle every day with that. I try to make sure family comes first and their needs. And um, it just it gets really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all going to be okay because they are seeing us work hard at something and they're going to learn that determination, that drive and that perseverance. Mm -hmm. So it's not all, um, it's not all candy coated. For As they're older and they can reflect on it. But I love how you also incorporate and it ties in because it's children's books, right? So why not? How old are your kids? Right now they're 11 and nine. Okay. Uh, Are they still reading the Alley Cat series or are they a little bit advanced for that? Do you feel? they're there's they're advanced for it because they're reading more of graphic novels and sure. going on to other novels so they're but already I, like your they're like your marketing team now they they love the stories and they want to get it out to younger kids right 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 and so they're trying to convince me now to write graphic novels which you know are kind of like that like dog man and uh diary of a wimpy kid kind of novels and so yeah. they keep saying mom your your alley cat fans and your readers are growing up and you need to give them something to read now with alley cat and i do agree and i do have that inner passion to do that um so that might be in the works in the next few years Mm. um that's incredible insight nine and eleven and they're like mom you have a a captive (laughs) audience you need to continue to give them content that's fantastic (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they're like my little... Uh, but at the same time, you got to stay in your lane too, right? And if you're really a superstar at that particular level of book, you, you don't want to get start doing everything and then it gets kind of muddy. But right. it is true that if you have a captive audience member, you should find ways that you can continue to bring them along the journey. So that's right. good. That's something you got to think, spend some time thinking about, right? Yeah. Um, I do this. Go ahead. Okay. That was a really good point about staying in your lane because I have struggled with that also about comparing myself to other people and mm-hmm. what other authors or, you know, different creative people are doing. And when they are doing something great, sometimes I'll start going, Oh, I want to do that. That looks cool. I want to, And then I have to get back and say, mm-hmm. do what you do well and keep doing that, you know, as much as you can. Yeah. It's hard. You compare yourself to everybody. You know, it is. I had a, great conversation with the guest that's going to be on my show. He told me about this app he created and it's, it's really exciting. I'm not going to talk about it here on your show, but it just made me start to think like, Oh, if I just spent like a half hour thinking of something, I bet you I can come up with a cool idea like that. But then I would just be off my game and not doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, It's about so, it's so true. I always, and I hate that we have to wrap up, but we're close to an hour in here, but I like to wrap up with this. So 
if you can give one message to our audience, leaving them inspired to be brave and bold in pursuit of their dreams, what would that be? I would tell them to just keep moving forward, keep going, keep working hard and persevering. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about the critics and don't worry about the people who don't see your vision because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of bravery and it takes a lot of courage, but you got this. I, I would agree. I love that. And sometimes it's as simple as that coming down to the core of um, listen to your heart and don't, you know, the, the noise is going to be there, but you got to get really strong and put up those, fen those high fences so you don't let someone else's influence right. deter you from going for what you're passionate about. And um, you are a great role model and you're inspiring me over here. Uh, thank you so much. And guys, if you're tuning in and, and catching the end of this as well, and I'll put it up here um, on the screen for anyone watching this, alleycatseries.com, A L Y catseries.com. You can email Allison at a l y s s o n at alleycatseries.com. If you're an aspiring author or maybe you feel stuck, she has great programs and consulting as well, as you heard. Check it out. She is available. She's making herself available, right? Right. Is there anything else you'd like to cover before we wrap up here? Oh, I just want people to keep pursuing their dreams and do what makes them happy because life is short and there's nothing better than being creative and being happy. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you so much for your time. This was, this was phenomenal for me, uh, educational and inspiring, as I mentioned a few times. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Hey guys, as always, a huge thank you for tuning in. One of my biggest takeaways from this week's episode is overcoming uncertainty by following your heart. Allison talked about doubting her decision to pursue storytelling and publishing her first book. She was unsure at first, but finally followed her heart and then a door opened. She saw her kids smiling back at her. She focused on her courage and her bravery and she kept on moving forward. Her exact words of encouragement are spot on. Bring joy to others. Always be kind. Teach children through literacy. Be creative and inspiring. Dream, daydream, and put in the work. You can make your dreams come true. I absolutely love that, and I love what Allison is doing. And thank you guys so much. I'm grateful for each and every one of you for checking out this podcast, whether you're tuning in on YouTube or Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and the others. Shout out to everyone who's been sending me feedback. I appreciate those reviews and the messages coming in on social media as well. Thank you for making this journey as much fun as it's been. I appreciate you guys spreading the love. You can check out more show notes and information at mikeduppodcast.com. It's M-I-K-E-D up podcast.com. We're powered by Social Chameleon. You know what to do. Be great and be grateful. <laughs>